Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my new channel, Dubs Nation. I've been making some videos lately, some analysis videos, and it seems to be going pretty well. So I'm going to start making some daily content for you guys, just because there's just so much happening. It's uh, tough to stuff it into just one video every so often. So it's a little bio on me. Um, I'm a blue collar guy, but I'm also college educated. I got a couple degrees in political science and pol public administration. And that's where I really started to uh, really enjoy politics. And I started to go down that rabbit hole. And so I have a wide range and a, a vast uh, range of world experience. So I figured I can use that and really share that with everybody. Um, why dubs? What is dubs? People are asking me. Dubs is actually my father's nickname, and I have the same name as him. So, by extension, I was also named or called dubs. And here we are, Dubs Nation. Uh, today, what I want to do is I want to go over how we can really help people get better informed and or how you can get better informed yourself. I've had many people asking me, how do we bring people to our side? How do we show people what is really going on? How can we bring back the civil discourse that seems to be lost and never going to come back? And I just don't think it can happen overnight. Maybe you'll be able to convince somebody in a single conversation, but I think it's going to be rare. So. What I really think needs to happen is if you really truly want to become informed, you just, it can't, you have to put the old ways to bed. You can't just go and watch 10 minutes of your CNN, ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox News. You, you can't do that anymore because there's just not enough context. And unfortunately, the, the most important thing to do to really understand the issues and make the most informed and best decision is to take the time. It really requires the time. And that's why they kind of call it taking the red pill. And it also goes with going down the rabbit hole. You have to really take the time and go down that hole and really start to entrench yourself in every single issue because there's so much stuff, especially this year, it feels like one week's worth of new cycle is an entire year's worth. So I, just to, uh, one example, if you try to explain the whole Obamagate situation the incident to somebody that's apolitical, they're going to look at you like they like you have two heads. It's just so much and so confusing for even somebody that follows it. So if you try to explain that to somebody that doesn't follow it, they're 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 going to you're going to lose them in two minutes. So the best thing you could do number one is to take the time. Number two is. Bring them along gradually, or for yourself, start gradually, okay? Don't just jump headfirst into the most left-wing or the most right-wing outlets. Just try to start with somebody that's softer or more in the middle. And I kind of put together a little list of people that we can start with. Uh, I really think we need to move away from the old television, large media conglomerates, and start moving towards the smaller podcast types because that's where you're going to get the most intimate and the best analysis in my opinion so somebody that you, i think is really should start with is somebody named dr carolyn boyashenko now if you're watching my channel there's a good chance that you probably already know who she is but on the off chance that you don't know who these people are um let's start here okay dr boyashenko was a left-wing democrat hardcore liberal and she really started to challenge herself and challenge her own political views and the whole her own world views too many times you get people that are they're just so afraid to be wrong and so afraid to be to admit that they're wrong that they don't want to challenge their own way of thinking but dr boyashenko did she's a workplace uh, psychologist i believe uh, but you can check her out and check into her, her own bio, which happened was she decided to up and go to a Trump rally one day. Uh, she was curious and all her friends implored her not to because it was going to be dangerous or whatever. Long story short, it turned out to not be dangerous. She just met a bunch of really nice, normal people up where she lives in Vermont. And she's been to many other rallies. She outlines her entire, uh, her entire ordeal, how she believes her, she took the red pill and from the way I took it was she didn't really move much on the political spectrum 
but the so much as the political spectrum moved and she stayed still meaning the left went so far to the left the whole thing the whole spectrum pretty much moved to the left causing her from to move to no longer be on the left but more in the middle and even a little bit to the right she outlines it everything and not only that she's a very uh, she's she's very tough but she's also very empathetic and and has a very calming nice presence and a nice voice and it's just a nice way of presenting everything but she's also tough and can stick up for herself she's got a good channel she's growing fast so i think you could start with her now the next person or the next thing you can move on to from there is somebody named tim pool again if you're watching my channel good chance you already know who he is he's got two channels tim cast and uh tim cast irl he does a lot of segments and i think this is why it's very important that you can really focus in on him he does like five segments a day they're about 10 12 15 minutes long depending on the on the issue he'll go over current events and then he'll break them down and he is the same it's very similar he started on the left but then he moved more towards the middle okay not so much he moved but the political spectrum moved and he ended up from being on the left to the middle so he does the same thing so the, both of them they started Democrat and they still consider themselves independent much like myself but after seeing everything and all the hypocrisy of the media and all the and how the media is in collusion with the Democrat Party and how it's the media is 95% left and there really is no conservative voices and they all work together to push some narrative that's not true he really started to move to the right and on top of that he also had his his daily five segments and he also did a live podcast show with his buddy adam and his producer lydia it had a really nice chemistry and it was really blowing up for a while anybody like i said if you watch if you know it it you you, you knew it was really getting big and unfortunately for whatever weird reason something happened and they had a falling out and they kind of separated to the fan to their uh subscribers and fans it was kind of like the beatles breaking up they were like so shocked um but either way, for the per for these purposes, it's still a good channel. He he's got a good way of breaking things down. You could tell he was in the media prior to this. He uh, he's got good camera presence. He knows it and he understands it. He's not he's not like me. There's no pauses or anything like that. I'm still very raw. You know, I'm working on it. But uh, he breaks everything down. He keeps it as short as he possibly can. There's no pauses and it's and he keeps it interesting. On that note, I think it's also good to check out the for, his former partner, his buddy, uh, former buddy Adam. Whatever the hell happened, Adam went and started his Hello, own. Hello, everybody. His Welcome own thing. To the Adam Cast. His own. He's got his own podcast now, his own show, and uh, I think it's really important to check him out as well because you can see what's unique to him is you can see his transformation. He had a really uh, stark change really big transformation he's a vegan skater uh big time you know left wing but kind of a, at the same time apolitical you know somebody that wasn't really paying much mind to it but they knew that they were a democrat and that was it so once tim Poole brought him in to do the show with him that's when he really like i said jumped down that rabbit hole and he went head first so he really started to look into everything and once he became more aware of everything that's when not only the political spectrum not only moves for everybody but he also ran in the other direction so i would definitely say that he went himself from left to right and now he's also going to be voting republican so check him out and check him out from the earlier days when he first was on uh tim pool's uh podcast because it's really cool to see how he's changed and grown into somebody that really didn't know too much but now he's got a bit better grasp of the the issues and he's uh he's like he's also becoming better with the camera and more self-aware and stuff like that so that's, he, he's pretty good to check out too the next one on the list is going to be the verdict with ted cruz now i understand ted cruz is his is pretty conservative senator but uh and he's all his co-host with the show is somebody uh named michael knowles who is very conservative i'll go to get to the, him in a second but i think the the verdict is very important 
uh, is another one that's very important, rather, because what's unique to this one is Ted Cruz's perspective into the government, into what is happening at the, in the Senate on a daily basis, in what is happening in the House. He is there. He knows why something is being voted on, what it's not being voted on. For example, they just did a show the other day, and he... Uh, outlines exactly what is in the Democrats Heroes Act, that $3.5 trillion bill that is not being voted on. And they keep claiming, well, we, we passed it months ago, but the, these evil Republicans just won't do it because they want people to die and they want you to starve. Meanwhile, nobody knows, include, nobody says, including the media, what is actually in that bill aside from COVID relief. And it's a whole laundry list of non-COVID related garbage. I mean, actual garbage i mean it's it would be too long to even try to outline it here so i suggest you check him out as well because it will be a good progression to start with dr carolyn boyshenko work with tim pool then start to go to the verdict the final piece on this list the final person on this list is going to end the in my opinion the best is going to be the daily wire and ben shapiro now, I get it. If you don't know, if you never listened to Ben Shapiro and you've heard, you know, people mention him, you probably heard, you, you know, oh, he's a Nazi or you have friends that say, no, 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 he's a racist. First of all, he's not. He's an Orthodox Jew who was the number one target of white supremacists in 2016. He's had legitimate threats against his life from actual white supremacists. So, um the FBI would like have to contact him and everything. So that, that's nonsense. He's just a conservative libertarian. But what's unique to Ben is his, uh, number one, his intelligence is, is through the roof. Number two, he has actual common sense. Number three, he's a Harvard law grad. Okay, so he could put all those together. Now, if you do know a little something about Ben, I encourage, and if you would know that he did these, uh, he went to the campus, university campuses, and he did these speeches. And then he would have a Q&A afterwards. If you've never seen him before, I suggest you check them out because they are excellent. You see him have these Q&As afterwards with students, and you'll have this snooty, you know, silver spoon-fed student or this, uh, you know, student that, you know, believes they're, this, uh, they're a victim no matter what, even though they're going to, a, um, you know, a six-figure tuition school. You know, but just because they are not white or what, or they they happen to be gay, whatever the case is, they they are a victim, and they try to hit him with some gotcha question, and he slaps them down in like three milliseconds because he speaks faster than any human on planet Earth, and he does it with precision, and he does it with facts, and he he really is excellent. He breaks down every every single incident uh, with a fine tooth fine tooth comb. He goes through everything well, and he's not going to just uh, be a cheerleader. You know, he's very critical of President Trump. He he didn't vote for him in 2016, but he also will tell you when Trump, when he believes Trump does well. I don't agree with him on everything, and you don't have to agree with anybody, any of these people on everything. But what's important is to get the contrast of the to compare and contrast the, their different viewpoints and how they break down each of the in, uh, individual incidents and current events. So one, if I don't really believe in having to pay for, you know, your your news and buying, I would never in a million years, you, you know, pay for a Washington Post subscription or a New York Times subscription. But I think if you are going to pay for any uh, subscription at all, I think the Daily Wire actually is worth it. I do have a subscription. It's not just Shapiro. You'll get, like I mentioned, Michael Knowles. He also has his own show on Daily Wire. There's uh, somebody else named Michael Clavin, uh, Matt Walsh. All of them very conservative, but excellent. So that closes up the podcast. Now, the next thing you're going to have to tell people or yourself is you're going to have to do your own research. And I think what you need to do is compare and contrast different articles and media outlet uh, me, uh, media write-ups as well so if you're going to get something from the daily wire like they have their own web page right here with different things on it 
go over to something like The Hill. The Hill is actually left wing, but they are not like a New York Times where they just fired all their liberal editors for the extreme woke leftist editors. You'll, you'll be able to at least sift through the bias in The Hill and use what they give you to compare and contrast to the more conservative page. This way you can get it from both sides and then you can take what you believe is the best from there. Others could be the Wall Street Journal. They're a little bit, I would say, towards the middle at least. Same same thing. Something a little bit more conservative is the Federalist. The Federalist is not bad. They do a good job as well. Uh, anything else? New York Times, Washington Post, can't do it. Things like the Daily Beast and uh, uh, Huffington Post, I would just completely stay away from because there's just too much. It's, uh, you know, rabid foaming at the mouth, Trump derangement syndrome, and it's going to gloss over, legitimately gloss over facts and any type of objectivity. Even if you don't like Trump, it's, you have to stay away from stuff like that because it will take your own objectivity away from you as well. Lastly, and probably, if not the most important thing, one of the most important things is your own analysis. Okay, a lot of these things, like I said, you have to take the time and look at it yourself. You have to watch it yourself. I know not a lot of people have the time to do that, but it's the best way to make the most informed decision for you and for your family and for the country. If the country's not doing well, you're not going to do well. So we need the economy to do well. We need law and order, things like that. Those things are actually are important. So go to something, you know, go over to C-SPAN and try to watch the... Uh, the different hearings and the different uh, sessions of Congress and, and things like that. One example would be the hearing that uh, the, ha the House of Representatives uh, resident amorphous blob Jerry Nadler held uh, for AG Barr. You would see, if you just watched a small clip of that, all you would see is Somebody like Nadler saying, reclaiming my time, you're a terrible person, you're you're pepper spraying innocent protesters, and that was it. If you just heard that, you'd be like, oh my God, there it is, uh, Trump and Barr at it again, these monsters, right? No, because here we are on day 85 of straight riots in Portland, 85 days straight. Okay, and if you watch that entire hearing, you would see how shameless the Democrats were in that hearing. They wouldn't even let the guy bar get up to go to the bathroom. Okay, it was just a circus for television. But you need to see the entire thing for context. So that is very important. Okay, so if you have somebody that's really interested in becoming more informed and they're apolitical and they they're very tentative about you know saying they support the right or even the left because nowadays if you do say you're a Trump supporter you gotta watch your back you know you know you can get a freaking brick to the head sometimes um, so people are people are legitimately afraid to actually say that but once they go down that rabbit hole they're not going to be able to come back up because they will see how bad the media and everything else is so if you know anybody that like that put them here and send them to my channel too, Dubs Nation. I'm going to start doing daily content for everybody, and I'm going to start doing current events, and we're going to try and grow it and get more voices out there. All right, thanks.